It'll be updated by October to the DSM-5 versions, just so you know. And at the end, when it gives you a level of care recommendation, one of the most important things I need to point out is it doesn't generate a single level of care recommendation that says, this is it, this is what the patient has to have, for a couple reasons. Number one, medical legally, that would be very difficult for treatment programs. Think about it. Number two, we know that there are patients who will reject a perfect recommendation, and then you have to consider, well, what is acceptable given the patient's feelings, because it has to be a partnership. Otherwise, you have a great recommendation with no patient getting treatment. Number three, it's possible that more than one level of care could be recommended, and it could depend on what the resources in a geographic region allow. So you may have, if you're familiar with the criteria, you may know that there are patients for whom 3.5 or 3.7 is recommended, but if you can combine level 2.5, partial hospital, with a low intensity residential program like a dormitory, a supervised dormitory program, that can often suffice instead of a 3.7. So the criteria output at the end will offer a range of possible treatments, much as an expert clinician would consider. So those are some of the features to make it not strictly a research tool, but a practical clinical tool. Okay. You want to look this up? Well, sure. And everybody has a has gotten past the air screen at this point. Okay. So um, if you haven't already hit create assessment, hit create assessment, and that's going to put you in the mode of, of starting a new assessment for the client. And those of you who are a pair at a single computer, one of you should start inputting the data now, and then you'll switch off. I'll tell you when we're about halfway through, you'll switch off and then your partner will be the one inputting the data at the keyboard so that everybody will get a chance, okay? Is the button assessment, okay. is that the one, the middle button on the left? When you say create an assessment? It, it's, it should be. Uh, at the very bottom on the setting of the middle of the page. The very bottom at the middle of the page. Okay, and before we start with the videos, if you notice there's a, a navigation menu on the left side of the assessment screen. And, and we're gonna we're gonna jump to so we're gonna jump to the drug and alcohol section. And you can do that just by clicking on that link and it's gonna open up a subsection called use substances, and that's where the workshop video is going to start. So anybody have any problems getting there? Great. So that left side series of tabs is going to be how you navigate from section to section. For instance, I'm going to go through this in the mock interview in a very linear fashion. It's going to look a little bit constrained. Um, in real life, you may ask an open-ended question, and the patient will start talking and they'll say, well, I use these substances, my parole officer sent me here because of this one. Well, now they're getting into the legal stuff. The tab organizer on the left allows you to jump to the legal section, which you see is the next section down, so that you're not restricted and forcing the patient to conform to just how the interview is set up. You can really follow the patient along and input data in different parts of the assessment, and then you can come back and clean up whatever has been omitted. So it gives you the freedom and flexibility to jump around, which is often what we do in real world clinical interview. So I'm going to play this, but I want to make sure. Does everybody, has everybody clicked in the drug and alcohol tab and under the subsections go to the used substances subtab? It's not going to look like general information. We're going to actually let me run this so we move it to. Once you click on use substances, you're going to have a new data input screen 
that's going to say use substances. And this is where I'd like you to be before we start playing the interview. Is anybody not seeing use substances in the right side of their screen now? Anybody not there? Great. All right, let's listen in to the mock interview. So I've asked her, have you used, ever used any of the following substances? Heroin. She's indicated methadone, tobacco, yes. Other opioids like narcotics, like pain medicines. Alcohol. Okay. And we mentioned. Well, Oxycontin, but that's prescribed. Okay. All right. Um, so click uh, opioids, alcohol, rates, or sleeping pills, sedatives, or hypnotics. Well, I used to, to smoke. Okay, so tobacco, yes. Yeah, okay. but, but I gave that up like 15 years ago. Okay. Um, and uh, have, do you ever use solvents or inhalants? No. Okay. And um, any other drug of use that I haven't mentioned? No, I don't think so. Okay. Have you ever used more than one drug at a time? Well, I guess if you count alcohol as a drug with my Oxycontin. Yes, we do. Okay, so that's important. I'm glad you mentioned that. Okay. Um, now let me talk to you about your alcohol use. Um, when it comes to your... Okay. Now, if you hit next, you'll go into the next section. You could also jump into it on the left side in the tab. Oh, hit save first. So the save button. And then you can hit next at the bottom. Or you can jump into it through the tab locator on the left hand side. So there are different ways to get into it. Submit, right? Yeah, it's, it's obscured here, but there's a submit or save button on the bottom. And do not hit submit. If, if you do, just raise your hand and we'll, we'll help you get back to where you should be. So they should hit what? Save? They should not hit submit. Hit save or next. Oh, save or next. Okay. So if you go back over here, and then you can see alcohol. That's pretty sophisticated. You can hit next. Yeah. Submit now and spill the answers for you. Okay, raise your hand if you don't have alcohol use up on your data entry screen on the right hand side. Anybody not have that? Up front here? Okay, you can jump into it also by going to the left hand tab side and under drug and alcohol, opening up the subsections and clicking on alcohol use. Try it that way. Does that get it for you? Can you help this fellow in the front, second row? Anybody else not at the alcohol use window? Okay, great. All right, so now you're going to see a frequency, quantity, frequency, recency assessment. And we do that before we go to the DSM criteria. So here we go. For use of alcohol, when's the last time you, you drank? Um, let's see, it's probably like last night, maybe midnight or so. All right, okay. so type so, of so one, one, one in the first response box, and then in the second response box, okay. you right click And days. how many days did you use alcohol? Pull that down, you could do 12 hours, or 24 hours. Well, probably or every day, I don't think I missed a day. Really? Okay. 
Okay. This gives you a chance to see the different ways you could respond. And the computer understands 12 hours or one day pretty much equally well. And in the second question, how many days in the last 30, you could actually click the up and down arrows or you could just type in three zero. So there are different ways to enter the data and whatever is comfortable for you. You can also move from response box to response box by just hitting the tab key. So there's easy ways to cycle through these sequence of questions. You don't have to keep using the mouse if you don't prefer to do that. So 30 days, and, and for how long have you used alcohol in any of them? Mm, probably 30 years, I'm afraid. Okay. Um, and obviously that was by drinking. And did you ever have a doctor tell you? Now, I made a pretty safe assumption that the alcohol is being used by drinking. But you know, with other substances, there are many routes of administration. So you'll see that option come up with other things. You know, you should, you know, have some alcohol for your, you know, health or for any reason. I mean, like to lower my cholesterol. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, we were pretty honest. Did you ever use alcohol to the point of intoxication? Well, you could probably say that I do that every day. Really? Okay. Um, when was your last use of alcohol to the point of intoxication? Last night. Um, how many days have you drunk to the point of getting drunk in the last 30 days? You can say every day. Really? Okay. Um, and how long have you been using alcohol to get yourself drunk? Oh, probably since my 30s. So maybe 20 years. 20 years, okay. Um, So in the last year, we're going to focus on that. Think about your use of alcohol, OK? Do you need to use more alcohol to get the same feelings you used to when you could use less? Or do you get less of a high when you use a certain amount now compared to what you used to use? Yeah. You know, sometimes I'll drink whiskey after my beers for just that reason. Oh, OK. Do you ever get physically sick when you stop drinking? I get bad shakes, if that's what you mean. Yeah. Do you sometimes use in order to prevent this from happening? I suppose so. I'm usually drinking at least by lunch. Okay. And when you're using alcohol, do you ever feel that you don't stop when you want to or feel that you should stop? Yeah, all, all the time. Okay. And have you ever tried to cut down? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times. Yeah. Okay. I know it's hard. Um, does alcohol take up a lot of your time? I don't know, but I'm drinking from the time I finish work until the time I go to bed at night. On the weekends, it seems like I'm drinking all day and all evening. So I'm drinking a lot of the time. Okay. All right. So you can see how we move from the quantity frequency. There were other questions she had answered before. So she's drinking two six packs a day and then sometimes chasing it with whiskey. And um, that's gotten us from the quantity, frequency, recency data into the diagnostic criteria. And now we're going to move on. And I think the next section is, let's see. We're scrolling down in the blue tab window to addiction treatment history. So did you see how I did that? Go to your left tab window and you'll see a little scroll bar at the right side of that window and scroll it down until you see addiction treatment history. And you're only doing this because we're jumping. If you're actually doing the interview, you would tab right through and it would take you to the next section. But we're skipping sections because I wanted to show you highlights of the interview. On the other hand, if you were doing this in a more open-ended fashion, you could jump, the patient might be jumping around and you might say, yeah, she wants to talk about addiction treatment history. 
I'll just jump to that section. This is how you would do it. So if you've gone to the left and down the tab bar and opened up under drug and alcohol, gone down the slider to addiction treatment history, you're going to get to the following screen. We'll get there in a second. Okay. So you should see addiction treatment history if you've gotten there. Anybody not see that on their computer screen? Great. All right, let's hear the interview at this point. I'm not hearing my audio. 